Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Linda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio show. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and tonight we're going to start a new series. I have been impressed for weeks that I needed to do another series on the wilderness because of so much revelation and so many new things that I've learned since I did the original series uh, on YouTube. So I think we're going to call this the new wilderness series. And tonight, in the first installment, we're going to be talking about what the wilderness is and what its purpose is. Another reason that I wanted to do this now is, from what I've seen in the Spirit, the end times, the further we progress, eventually, at, towards the end, everyone that is still here will be in the wilderness. Everyone that I have talked to that has read my first book, The Wilderness Companion, said that they are absolutely terrified to go through the wilderness. When I went through those wilderness journeys, what I learned from them, my understanding was if you're taken into the wilderness, it's because you're in sin. Well, that can't be true 100% of the time because Jesus was led into the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, but he never sinned. I like the way that my friend Nicole says it best. She said, it's not a punishment, it's a process. It's to refine you. It's a process. And she said, you know, everybody's wilderness season is different. So don't compare yourself to others. And she is so right about that. Nicole's really, really wise. And she also said, you know, whatever God calls us to do, he equips us to do. So if he's called you to uh, go into ministry, he's going to equip you to go into ministry. And I think that my many trips into the wilderness uh, were a lot of the equipping that I had for the ministry that he has called me to do. Okay, so let's talk about what the wilderness is. The wilderness is a season of very intense refining in your life. Mine were times of very intense pressure and they were times of lack for the most part. Although later I went through other types of wilderness, I went through a healing wilderness uh, and I went through, I think, an emotional wilderness at one point too. Wilderness seasons to me, or mine anyway, were training in humility, in adversity, in persecution, in lack, in perseverance, and they made me choose the wilderness seasons were so hard. They made me choose, are you going to follow me? It was almost like God had this big question mark saying, are you going to follow me no matter how hard it gets? Or are you going to turn back and run back to Egypt? Wilderness seasons build your faith tremendously. I would not want to go through another one and pray I never have to go through another one. But I would not take $10 million for the ones I went through because I have strong faith now I don't think I could have gotten any other way I believe that whatever God leads you into the wilderness to learn if you can figure it out which you can't always figure out why you're there until after you get it it's kind of a thing where you can see it when you're leaving but you can't really see it when you come in but I think that the wilderness makes us pursue harder after whatever he's trying to teach us because we want out of the wilderness, don't we? Like when I was in the healing wilderness, what I think was the healing wilderness, I pursued it very, very intensely because I was in pain, y'all, and it was not fun. And he had told me that he wanted me to get healed, so I was pushing in really hard to get that. The Lord will redirect your path sometimes in the wilderness. When I went into the wilderness, when I went into all the wildernesses, actually, at first, I was chasing after a job and provision because I needed to provide for myself. And I was hoping to find a husband. And there was Jesus standing right there saying, hey, I'm over here. And I have all that. You don't need any of that stuff down there. When you go through the wilderness, no matter who is around you, 
it feels like there is nobody in that hot desert but you and the Lord. That's it. And sometimes you can't hear him. So you feel, you know, pretty desolate out there. But he's trying to show us when we are alone with him in the wilderness that, you know, if you hurt, he's the comforter. If you need provision, he's the provider. If you need healing, he's the healer. I think the biggest purpose of the wilderness is to draw us closer to him into deeper intimacy and to know him better in all these different facets of things that he wants to do for us and he wants to give to his children. The majority of my beginning wildernesses, which was most of the wildernesses, were about provision and having faith and knowing him as a provider and as the one that I could lean on and depend on. I used to have an incredibly independent spirit. I just... You know, when you come out of abuse, it kind of does that to you. You don't want to be beat up anymore. So you're just like, no, I'll just take care of myself. And so you get very, very independent. You work 10 jobs or however many jobs you have to work so that you don't have to depend on anyone else. So no one can control you and hurt you like that again. And that produces an orphan spirit in you. And that is not something we want. Okay, so the purpose of a wilderness season is some type of refining, something that God wants us to learn about him uh, and a deeper, more intimate walk with him. So that begs the question, are you in a wilderness now or are you entering a wilderness and how can you tell? What are some signs that you may be entering a wilderness? For those of you who think you're already in a wilderness, you may be able to look back and see these. One of the things that I have discovered may be an indication that you're entering a wilderness is God's been dealing with you about a sin and you're not really letting go of it, especially if it's pride or idolatry. That's one sign. Another sign, you're being trained for ministry as Jesus was. You're being forced into close contact, usually on a daily basis either by where you have to stay or where you work with somebody who really gets on your nerves, somebody that just rubs you the wrong way. Another sign, the brook is drying up. Your provision is dwindling. Another sign, you're in bad circumstances and everything you have tried to do to rescue yourself that usually works, nothing is working. That is a real big sign right there. And sign number seven, the Lord is moving you or has just moved you to some place you didn't know you were going. And let me just tack one more on the end there. Your life is falling apart around you and you are helpless to stop it and you have no idea why it's happening. Those are all classic signs that you're entering the wilderness. What should you do if you are entering the wilderness? Well, There's not a lot you can do, honestly. I mean, I know what you want to do. You want to turn and run back the other way, but you don't want to run back to Egypt. It makes it way harder. You don't want to do that. The best thing to do is try to remain calm, submit, get into the word, pray, 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 fast if you know how to fast and you can health-wise. I did a lot of fasting in the wilderness. The closer it was to the end of one of my wilderness seasons, the more I would fast because I wanted out, y'all. That last uh, wilderness in Princeton, I think it was, I fasted 12 days. I came off the fast for three days, turned around and fasted for like nine more or something. I mean, it was fast after. I didn't care. I just, I didn't care about the food. I just wanted out of the wilderness. Okay. Does everybody have to go through the wilderness? What the Lord taught me was every Christian must pass through the wilderness on their way to their promised land. So if God has promised you something, yes, you will be going through the wilderness. If he's not promised you anything and you're not expecting anything, maybe not. As long as you're not called to ministry. If you're called to ministry, you're going there. Is there any way to avoid wilderness seasons? Not if you're called and not if you're going to the promised land. If you're called to ministry or you're going to the promised land, you're pretty much guaranteed at least one. But if you are extremely obedient and devoted to the Lord, hopefully it'll be a real short one and you'll do really well, score high and get out soon. If you fight God while you're in the wilderness or if you just refuse to submit or refuse to get it 
and you keep trying to do things your own way, you're probably going to be there for a while. Wildernesses are places of uncertainty and intensity. They are, in my experience, places of very little to no comfort. Now, in my beginning wildernesses, which there were several, I mean, it was like the Lord just stripped the comfort out of there somehow. In I, uh, the first one especially, oh, that was bad. He changed my circumstances where I was very uncomfortable. He definitely got my attention real quick that way. Only I didn't know it was him at first. I thought my life was just falling apart and I couldn't figure out how to put it together again. So as you can tell, the wildernesses vary. They do from season to season, from person to person. The circumstances of your wilderness may be completely different from mine or anybody else's. One thing remains the same. By the time you leave the wilderness, there will be a gift in your hands that you could not have gotten any other way. And it will go with you through the rest of your life. And you will be very glad that you have it. The two things that I struggled the most with uh, in my all my early wildernesses was the same. One was the fear. Uh, the fear that the provision was not going to come through. And... God was trying to replace my fear with faith, but I walked in that fear the whole time I was in those wilderness seasons. And I acted just like the Israelites, y'all, just like them. God would do a miracle for me, and I would rejoice, and a couple days later, you know, I would need another miracle, and I would fall all apart again, and, oh, is he going to come through, is he, you know, but that's how he does, and then, you know, two more days, I'd rejoice, and then I'd need another miracle, and two days, I'd be on my face, and scared to death, and fasting, or whatever else, you know, believing for rent money again. That was the way it went, and it, <laughs> honestly, it wears you out. It wore me out. The, the second thing that I really battled in those wilderness seasons was the weariness of just battling constantly, trying to keep my faith up, just trying to believe so hard, and I didn't have any real faith back then. Let me tell you how you get faith, because it's really, it's so simple, you can't even believe how simple it is. Faith is just the process of believing what God says in his word. That's what it is. It's looking at the Bible and going, you know what, this is true. And so if God said that, I can believe it. And that's what it really comes down to. And he's trying to teach us that in the wilderness. If he's trying to get provision to us or he's trying to get healing to us, he is trying to teach us, hey, I'm God. You can believe my word. I'm going to do this for you. You are my child. I'm going to take care of you. If you need food, I'll rain down manna that no one's ever even seen before if I have to do that. If you need a job, I will give you a job. I will make a job when there are no jobs. That was my prayer when the Great Recession was going on. And I was trying so desperately to find a job. And there were no jobs, y'all. There were no jobs. And there were certainly no jobs for a, a plain-looking, overweight, you know, middle-aged woman. There were no jobs. There were, weren't even any jobs for the young, pretty people. And my prayer was, Lord, I, you know what I know how to do. Please make a job for me. And he did exactly that when it was his timing to do it. Because really, he didn't want me to work. He had retired me in 2008. But when rent money didn't show up on the first of that, that one month, I had a meltdown, y'all. I just freaked out. I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to do. I had worked my whole life. I started working before I was even a teenager. I had always worked. I had always been able to provide for myself when I was single, provide for my children when I was raising them. I worked all through my marriage. I mean, I had always worked. And so if you needed money, you went and you got a job and you worked. But I had never seen a time where there were no jobs. And so I didn't know what to do at that point. I didn't know what to do. And I just went back to God and just begged a lot because I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I learned throughout all those wildernesses and, and a lot since, that faith is all about just believing what he told us. It is about believing what his word says and refusing to let the devil convince you of anything else. So if you need provision, you go to his word, go to the internet and search, do a Google search, you know, scriptures about God providing for me or something like that. Let it bring all the scriptures up and go look those up in the translation that you read, whether that's King James or NIV or whatever you read, look it up in your Bible and go in there with your highlighter and highlight those and put your little tabbies on there 
and start reading those every day. Start speaking them out loud. When the bills come in the mail and you don't have any money to pay them, you just lay hands on them and say, my God shall supply all my needs. If that's your scripture, you stand on that one. I was a tither, no matter how little I had. I've always been a tither. And so the scripture I stand on is Malachi 3.10. Yeah, he's going to open the windows of heaven. He's going to rebuke the devourer. He's going to provide for me. I'm going to have enough and I'm going to have some over. And you know what? He's always provided for me. The month that the rent money didn't show up, the, the landlord applied the deposit. But then he scared the daylights out of me because he said, look, if you don't have other arrangements made, you're going to need to move in two weeks. And I said, okay, don't worry. I said, you won't have to toss me out. I'll go. And I was so scared. I was so scared. But anyway, I wrote about that in the book. But God came through. He brought me. He made a job for me. You know, I went back to work and was exhausted because I was doing an unbelievable commute of 55 miles each way in Dallas, Fort Worth traffic. But I didn't even care. I was just so grateful to have a job because all that was on my mind was go to work, get the paycheck, go home, pay the bills. Just keep it going. So you know, I thought I was fixing to be slipping under, sleeping under a bridge, and I didn't even know how to do that. And I don't like bugs either, so it wouldn't have worked out well for me. I would not make a good homeless person, y'all. Anyway, just so you know, if or when you go into the wilderness, where you get the faith and where you, whatever he's trying to teach you about, if you're in a healing wilderness, go find the healing scripture. Start there. You'll probably come out of the wilderness a lot faster if you will do that. I really didn't know what to do when I was in the wilderness after the first one. I think I knew then what it was, but I didn't know what it was for or why I had to keep going back. So I didn't know how to make my wildernesses any shorter, and I didn't know I didn't know what he wanted. So anyway, that's all I have for y'all in this installment. There's I don't know yet how many episodes there's going to be to this series, but I'm hoping to bring y'all some real good teaching on the wilderness. So if or when you go through the wilderness or if you're there now, I really hope that this will help you and that yours won't be as long or you won't have to make as many trips there as I did. So thanks for listening. Jesus bless you. Y'all have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc. Glenda Lomax, P.O. Box 60, Glencoe, Arkansas 72539, or by email at jphtoday at gmail.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination. Have you ever gone through a time in your life where suddenly it just felt like your whole life was falling apart? I call these experiences the wilderness experiences. Wilderness experiences are a time of great uncertainty and change. Uh, There are times when our faith is tried and refined. After many experiences, the Lord spoke to me to write The Wilderness Companion, which is a virtual roadmap through the desert times of your life. Find out why you've been led to the wilderness. Find out what the biggest hindrance is to receiving provision in the wilderness. Find out what the seven temptations of the wilderness are. Drastically cut the time you spend in the wilderness by learning how to partner with the Lord instead of working against Him. Every Christian needs to read The Wilderness Companion. It's by Glenda Lomax and it's available on Amazon.com or WingsOfProphecy.com. Amazon.com, The Wilderness Companion by Glenda Lomax. Do you know someone who is going through a wilderness season right now? Have you heard about the Wilderness Companion Study Guide? It's a workbook with 41 lessons, including new stories from the wilderness and questions to help you work through your own wilderness experience. Read each lesson, then complete the questions to apply the lesson to your own wilderness experience. Get your copy of the Wilderness Companion Study Guide today and get one for a friend. Available now on Amazon.com. The Wilderness Companion Study Guide by Glenda Lomax. Available on Amazon.com.
Have you heard? The 2016 and 2017 messages have been published in book form. Even those who do not profess a belief in God can see something is amiss in the world around us. What is coming for our world in these last days? What does the Lord want us doing while we're waiting for His glorious reappearance? Time of Reckoning and Soon It Will Be Night each contain approximately 200 prophetic messages and visions from the throne room of God telling what is coming to America and the world in these end times. The Lord has always warned nations when they were headed for destruction. He has always warned His own people. Are we also being warned? Get your copy of Time of Reckoning and Soon It Will Be Night, available now on Amazon.com.